Good afternoon. We just completed a briefing uh, with the Unified Command Group here at GOSEP. Obviously, Tropical Storm Nate remains a very fast-moving uh, storm. Since yesterday, it, sl it shifted slightly uh, to the east, but all of south-central and southeast Louisiana should be prepared and on guard. Uh, as you know, the waters in the Gulf of Mexico remain very warm, and that means that there's still a lot of uncertainty, especially as it relates to the intensity of the storm once it makes landfall. Uh, it could still move, but we're being told now that the eye of the storm should remain in the cone as it is presently depicted on the forecast. We do expect landfall uh, very early on Sunday morning as a strong tropical storm or Category 1 hurricane. Uh, we are being advised to expect a Category 1 hurricane and to plan for a Category 2. That's just uh, what we always do is, is you plan for what you expect and then you prepare for uh, uh, one stronger than that. Uh, critically important, this is going to be a nighttime event. So just like we said last night, we want individuals to be positioned where they want to be when the storm hits and postured uh, appropriately by dark tomorrow night. So we're asking everyone to be uh, at 8 o'clock tomorrow night where they want to be and postured appropriately. Further, with this being a nighttime event with uh, storm surge, with rain, with the wind that we expect, uh, nighttime activities will be much more hazardous than normal. Uh, it is very difficult to see water in the road, much less gauge uh, its depth or the strength of the current uh, when it's dark. Uh, and we're asking people uh, after uh, 8 o'clock tomorrow night for sure uh, not to be out uh, unless it is absolutely critical to do so. If you need supplies in order to ride the storm out, then you are advised to get them now and certainly no later than early tomorrow. We're asking everyone to monitor the weather reports as well as the directives from their local authorities. And when they get directives from the local authorities, obviously to heed uh, those directives. Tropical storm force winds, uh, we expect tomorrow in southeast Louisiana in the vicinity of Plaquemines Parish and Grand Isle in Jefferson Parish uh, early in the afternoon. Uh, so that's, that's the earliest that we expect tropical storm force winds. Obviously, the impacts from this storm are highly dependent upon the track and upon the intensity, but we are being told to expect three to six inches of rain, a storm surge of four to seven feet along the open coastline, three to five feet along Lake Pontchartrain, and one to three feet along Lake Maurepas. And obviously, anyone in low-lying areas, anyone who needs to prepare and hasn't done that, uh, we are urging them to prepare now. As the storm moves into the Gulf, it's critical that you monitor updates and heed the advice of local authorities. Uh, I was able to meet with Mayor Landrew of New Orleans today. Obviously, the state stands ready to support the city of New Orleans and really all of the affected areas uh, any, any way that we can. I can tell you that the level of communication and coordination with all local authorities has been excellent over the last uh, two or three days around this storm event. Um, New Orleans did just uh, shortly ago announce a 6 p.m. curfew uh, for tomorrow evening. Uh, now, you're going to hear from Secretary of State Tom Scheller tomorrow because tomorrow is the last day of early voting. Uh, in the election that, that's, that's coming up uh, next Saturday. Uh, with that being the case, we're asking people, if you're going to early vote tomorrow, early vote early. Don't early vote late. Uh, <laughs> because the sooner you can do that and get back home, uh, the better. I want to reiterate that no one should take this storm lightly. It has already claimed the lives of at least 20 people in Nicaragua and in Honduras. And as we know from past storms, low intensity uh, doesn't necessarily mean low impact. Uh, and I will remind everyone again that Isaac in 2012 was a Category 1 storm, and yet we had 
flooding in areas that had never flooded before. Uh, and it bears repeating, this will be a nighttime event. Do not attempt to drive on flooded roads. And don't endanger yourself or the first responders who would be called out to assist you uh, if you needlessly expose yourself uh, to danger. I would remind you also to visit getagameplan.org for information on how to prepare for this storm if you've not already done it. You can also visit emergency.la.gov for important updates. And as for road closures, conditions, updates, uh, 511LA.org, 511LA.org for real-time information about the conditions, closures of roads. Now, our next briefing will be tomorrow morning. Uh, we will send out uh, notice uh, in the morning of the exact time, but I think you can expect that that press conference will happen right around noon. Uh, following the next meeting of the Unified Command Group. Uh, so at this time, I'm going to be followed by Secretary of State uh, Tom Shedler, and after that, we will take your questions. Thank you, Governor. Uh, I, I like that slogan, uh, vote early, not late. Before you file a trade name uh, with me, I'm going to go ahead and jump on that. But uh, thank you very much. At, at this time, the only closure of a uh, early voting site is in Plaquemines Parish at Point Isla Hash on the East Bank. Uh, however, those individuals in Plaquemines Parish can certainly utilize the Burris location and the Belt Chase location. Uh, as the governor indicated, we're going to monitor this uh, throughout the day tomorrow to a changing environment uh, for curfews and the like. Uh, he indicated that uh, Mayor Landrieu has already announced a 6 p.m. curfew in New Orleans, and we'll wait and see if there's others that join in on that. But uh, early voting closes at 6 p.m. So again, vote in the morning if at all possible uh, and remember we still have voting day a week from now October 14th and uh, we'd please urge you to either take advantage of the last day tomorrow or October 14th so thank you very much thank you at this time we will take your questions Governor, in terms yes. of the, the pump situation in New Orleans yeah. Uh, what's the status there, and are the National Guard troops in place on site already? Uh, they are. Uh, Fifteen uh, National Guard soldiers who have been trained up on this mission for weeks now uh, are in place. They have communications and transportation with them uh, to get their eyes on, on pumps as they're running and to report any problems, and, and th that's well coordinated and rehearsed. Um, with respect to the pump capacity, and the capacity to generate electricity, the Sewage and Water Board in New Orleans is actually a much better position than they have been in many months. Um, it's my understanding that the uh, city of New Orleans now has 109 of 120 pumps uh, operational. Uh, so, uh, and that combined with the fact that the forecast uh, for rain, and of course, you know, it's always possible that you get more than, than is forecasted, uh, and so that's why we have some concern, but we're not unduly concerned. But the forecast for rain uh, in New Orleans uh, is less than what they often received in an afternoon thunderstorm in the summertime. Uh, and so while there might be some isolated areas of, of street flooding until the pumps can pump the water down, uh, at this point we don't uh, see uh, much happening beyond that in New Orleans. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Has the National Guard, since they've been watching today, seen any problems? I, I am unaware of any of any problems. I, I'm not, sh you know, it, it, the weather has been so good today. I can't imagine that they they would have seen any any issues in New Orleans. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Are you all helping at all with the catch basin clearing? Well. The Department of Transportation, I've got Sean Wilson here now, and he can tell you what, what I know that, that they have been working uh, across South Louisiana uh, to clean uh, catch basins to make sure that drainage along state roads uh, is flowing as freely as possible. With respect to assistance, and I'm assuming your question was in New Orleans? Yes. Sean? Oh, yes, Governor. We have uh, cleaned about 2,300 uh, catch basins across um, South Louisiana, including New Orleans, along the state route that comes to about 32,000 linear feet. Uh, so we're pretty comfortable with 
uh, what we've cleaned, and we clean on a regular basis around the state, but we did take some emergency precautions and did some emergency contracts at the earlier part of this hurricane season uh, to be able to do a more robust cleaning. And um, the vast majority of them were, were well cleaned and didn't need any extra cleaning. We had maybe less than 10 percent that needed some level of cleaning uh, through that process. But all the state routes uh, in the city of New Orleans, uh, and I know the city has been working on that as well on, on local streets. Okay. So you guys are in charge of different catch bases than the city is. That, yeah, that's correct. There's a state role on state roads and the local streets, which is a much more robust system down in New Orleans, is the city responsibility, and uh, we're not allowed by state constitution to work off of that system under normal circumstances. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Governor, I guess I have the same question that I, I sort of had yesterday. Uh, now that the storm <coughs> is shifting, is there any concern about complacency and people not kind of following yeah. the, the, the things they're hearing from their local officials? Well, you always have concern about complacency. Um, first of all, if, if the storm just remained a tropical storm, it has the potential to do an awful lot of damage and expose a lot of people to injury or death. And the storm has already killed 20 people. Uh, now, given that, the intensity of the storm as it makes landfall is a, is a guesstimate. Now, they know uh, an awful lot these days, but, but the National Weather Service will tell you they are much more confident in the track that they predict than they are in the intensity, especially more than 24 hours out. The storm is not yet over the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, the waters remain very warm. Intensification is possible uh, because the energy from that water will, will uh, energize the storm. What we have going for us is the fact that the storm is moving forward at such a rapid clip. Uh, right now, 21 miles per hour, and it's not scheduled to, to slow much. Um, it, but it is still true that they can predict the track much better than they can trick, uh, predict intensity. Uh, so we expect that this will not be primarily a rain event. It will be primarily a wind and storm surge uh, event. But those things uh, cause an awful lot of problems. And I will remind people that in the flooding we had here last year, most of the injuries and fatalities came because people were driving through water uh, that was deeper than they thought it was, and they just were not able to successfully navigate through that. That hazard is very much in play for this storm. And so it's always a concern of ours that people will, will not take the storm as seriously as they should. Uh, that's why we're giving the sternest possible warnings and asking people uh, to be as cautious as they possibly can and to remember that this is going to be a nighttime event. Everything is much harder at night under any circumstances, but especially when you have rain, uh, wind, and storm surge all converging at the same time. And as you all know, uh, we already have uh, waters standing uh, in certain areas of South Louisiana along the coast and, and the lakes uh, much higher than normal. And, and so uh, we, we do want people to be very, very cautious and not take this storm for granted and to remain uh, engaged. Watch the Weather Channel. Uh, pay attention to local authorities. Listen to the radio. Uh, if you have questions, call. Uh, the local office of emergency management in, in your parish. Uh, and by the way, there are a number of mandatory and voluntary evacuation orders uh, across southeast Louisiana. Uh, if any individual out there subject to one of these orders has needs related to transportation or f in terms of a place to go, uh, they need to contact their local office of emergency management uh, so that they can receive the assistance they need uh, with that evacuation. Any other questions? Okay, we'll see you about noon tomorrow. Thank you very much.